The Triassic period, North America, 220 million years ago, a time of strange environments and even stranger creatures. From the long-limbed Hesperosuchus to the armored Desmatosuchus, and even early dinosaurs like Daemonosaurus. The land is a plethora of weird and bizarre creatures that only exist during the Triassic. One of the most common predators in this region is Coelophysis, long, lightweight, three-meter dinosaurs that in the dry season will gather in large numbers. However, it is currently the wet season, so more often they will be seen alone or in small numbers. Two of them have made their way to the marshes to drink and hunt. They are opportunistic, going after just about anything. Today, they are looking for amphibians and young archosaurs. Their long, thin legs don't sink into the mud, and slender heads and necks can crane around or over the thick marsh plants. One of the dinosaurs scans the area, and he catches a glimpse of something in the water. A pair of eyes stare at him. He makes out a short skull, but the rest of the creature is hidden beneath the shallow water. For a long while, the two stared at each other. The Coelophysis had no idea what it was, and therefore, if it was potential prey, or a potential threat. The submerged creature didn't move, but from behind it, a row of spines that were the top of its tail began to rise out of the water. At that moment, the second Coelophysis walked up to her partner, and followed his gaze till she saw the odd head in the water. She was not as cautious as the male, and walked towards the odd water dweller, lowering her head ready to strike. But the strange creature struck first. It burst out of the water, its whole body both suddenly revealed, and now in mid-air. Mouth agape trying to bite the dinosaur's head. The creature was a 1.5 meter chimeric blend of different features, a short thick skull with canid teeth, an armored body of a crocodile, the long legs of a lizard, and a spiked newt-like tail. The Coelophysis had never seen anything like it, and now it was attacking her with mad ferocity. She pulled her head back, and doubled back, just escaping the creature's jaws. It then splashed back into the shallow water, but was instantly chasing her down, now trying to snap her heels. The Coelophysis jumped back, trying to get away, but her attacker was vicious and quick. She reversed into the male Coelophysis, and both started moving backwards. The creature began lunging at both dinosaurs, and that gave each of them enough time to turn tail and run back to dry land, wanting never to return to this marsh again. Their attacker is the Van Clevia, a fierce carnivore from an ancient lineage of reptiles. The hunter didn't intend to kill the Coelophysis, he just wanted them out of his territory. Van Clevia are aggressive ambush predators, and in a world so full of other carnivores and tough herbivores, they have evolved to go all out on anything that disturbs them. Having scared the dinosaurs senseless, he turns and wades back into the water, where he is more at home. Van Clevia are semi-aquatic, and they mostly feed on aquatic prey, but their robust skulls and large teeth mean they will try and eat just about anything, at least once. He swims through the shallow water, using his broad tail to push himself forward. He mostly sticks to murkier or shallow waters, the former because they help conceal him from prey, and the latter because there are far larger predators in more open water, such as the phytosaurs. Right now he is hungry, so he finds a submerged log and squeezes under it, setting up an ambush. He can hold his breath for up to half an hour if he remains still, and it doesn't take too long before some fish swim close to the log, unaware that part of said log is a camouflage Van Clevia. He waits and waits, allowing them to come into range. He darts forward, clapping his jaws shut, but the fish evade him. Frustrated, he swims after them. He bites twice more, but he catches nothing. He stops near the surface and sees his prey as scattered out from him. Hungry and irritated, the Van Clevia swims to the surface to take a quick breath of air. As he begins to descend, he notices a shift in the water. Perhaps something else he can eat is coming this way. He turns, but as he swims, he sees something approaching. It has canid-like teeth, an armored body, a newt-like tail, and it is twice his size. The male has almost run right into the face of a full-grown Van Clevia, 
nearly four meters long. He swivels around and beats his tail as hard as he can, but the adult is faster and bolts after him, grabbing his tail in its jaws. The huge adult throws his head back and the younger Van Cleavia is flicked out of the water briefly before smacking back down. The adult grabs the victim's midsection in his jaws and swims to the riverbed, slamming it into the muck. The smaller Van Cleavia tries to bite his attacker, but is soon pinned under its forelimbs. The larger male avoids the panic bites of the juvenile, maneuvers himself so he's directly over him, and then clamps his jaws over its head. He then pulls backwards and rips the smaller Van Cleaver's head and neck clean off. The successful hunter discards the head and picks up the body in his jaws, returning to the surface, leaving the head and neck to the scavengers. The massive Van Cleaver hauls the limp carcass close to the shore, resting in the ankle-deep water. He holds down the body and pulls bits of flesh away in his jaws. Like almost all predators, Cannibalism is a part of life for the Van Cleavia. As the adult feeds on his own kind, he begins to notice the telltale signs that the wet season is coming to an end. No doubt this meal will help him greatly in getting through the tough dry season ahead. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a creature that looks like it came straight out of Skull Island itself. Van Cleavia. Van Cleavia's first remains were discovered in 1962 in the Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona. It wasn't named until 1995. Only partial remains were found, but in 2022, a pair of nearly complete skeletons were discovered, plus additional fragmentary remains would be discovered in later years. Van Cleavia lived in the western United States. During the late Triassic between 228 and 201 million years ago, it was a non archosaur archosauriform. To make that a little easier to understand, archosaurs include crocodilians and their ancestors, dinosaurs, and birds. So while Van Cleavia isn't an archosaur, it is relatively closely related to that family. Currently, it sits at a more basal level being more closely related to Archosauria than the Erythrosuchans and the Protosuchians. The more complete fossils of Van Cleavia are about 1.2 meters long, however fragmentary remains of some individuals are calculated to have reached 3.8 meters in length. This may be an example of juvenile and adult remains, or it may be that the two different sized individuals are separate species. Not enough of the larger individuals' remains are known, however, and Van Cleavia has only one species attributed to it, that being Van Cleavia campi. Van Cleavia was a semi-aquatic predator that lived in freshwater ecosystems. As an overview, we can see that it has a short, robust skull with large, sharp teeth, held by a rather long neck. The whole body is covered in multiple types of hard, protective osteoderms. The limbs are small, but would have still been useful on land. The tail is tall and flat, used to propel itself through the water. Now let's get into more detail, and we can see how truly unique it is. Starting at the skull, we can see it is quite short and the bones are compact and robust. This is very different to many semi-aquatic predators like crocodiles that usually have either long or flat skulls. This was the same in the Triassic, so Van Cleavia may have been niche partitioning, feeding on some food source that other predators weren't eating or couldn't eat. With that being said, it's not quite clear what Van Cleavia was feeding on, as its skull and dentition are so strange. Speaking of which, Van Cleavia had many large cone-like teeth, the front teeth of which have been described as caniform-like, as they are quite diverse in both size and shape, an interesting case of convergent evolution. The teeth behind them were so large that one on each side of the bottom jaw needed a notch in the top jaw in order for both jaws to close. These fearsome teeth and their large forward-facing eyes would have made Van Cleavia an efficient and deadly hunter. Oddly, Van Cleavia lacks an antorbital fenestra. This is the hole in the skull in front of the eyes normally seen in archosauriforms. They also usually have two temporal fenestra behind the eyes near the rear of the skull. Van Cleavia has a single large fenestra in that area, while the top of the skull is wide and flat. 
This skull was held on a rather long neck, giving Van Clevia the extra range it needed to snare prey, to make up for its compact jaws. The limbs were short and thin for its body size, so it likely lived similarly to modern crocodilians, spending the majority of its time in the water and coming up ashore for rest and sunbathing. It's not known how fast it could move on land, if it could run or if it pushed itself along its belly. It had five toes on each foot, but interestingly none of the fossils preserved any claws, and it's believed that it may have simply not have had any. The tail is also like a crocodilian's, being tall and flat, with the bottom vertebra extending to increase its width. However, the top of the tail is not extensions of the vertebra. Looking closely, we can see that these are actually osteoderms that extend upwards to form the sail-like top. Osteoderms are bones that don't connect to the skeleton, like the armor plating of an ankylosaur, or in our modern day, the armored scutes on the backs of crocodiles. This adaptation of forming osteoderms to create a paddle instead of extending the vertebra is only seen in Van Clevia, and its closest relative, Litterosuchus, from the Middle Triassic in China. Now we can see from the well-preserved skeleton, Van Clevia was covered in multiple types of tough armor. These are broken up into five distinct types of osteoderms, from A to E. Type A, in green, is along the throat, and are teardrop shaped with a rounded rear edge and a pointed front tip. Type B, in purple, cover most of the body. They tightly overlap and possess front spurs and low keels, and would have provided a good level of defense. Type C in blue cover the belly, and are large, boxy and rounded, being compared to ankylosaur armor. Type D in yellow are the formerly mentioned tail osteoderms. These were likely connected by some sort of soft tissue to form a fin. The largest is at the base of the tail, and they decrease in size the further along the length of the tail, to the tail tip. Type E, in red, cover the limbs and are small, round and thin, likely so they did not restrict the limbs and digits when moving. I've said it a lot on my videos that animals from the Triassic era are often weird or unique looking, but Van Clevia may be the strangest of them all, not purely from its appearance, but its biology. I referred to it as a chimera in the narrative section, and it really does feel like one. From its strange skull to its long body covered in what feels like chainmail, to those osteoderms evolved to create a tail fin. As soon as I learned about it, I knew I had to make a video on it, and I'm pretty sure barely anyone knows about Van Clevia, and that is a real shame. So thank you to all those that share in my current obsession with old Triassic animals. I have only covered the basics of Van Clevia here, and the Wikipedia page on it is very detailed for a Wikipedia page, so if you're more interested, go check that out. But what do you think of Van Clevia? And for my question of the week, what sort of prey do you think Van Clevia was going after? Personally, I think it may have been a generalist, but as no one seems to know for sure, I'm definitely open to more ideas on that matter. What lesser known extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.